the good morning. Again, uh, bringing a sunrise to lift our heads in hope. As I remember the Lord over 30 years ago lifted my head in hope, seeing the sun. And, uh, and here's our mission for this year, uh, for our life, I believe. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. Again, I read. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. Those who are stumbling to the slaughter, I believe, have lost hope, hope in life. And if that's you, know, know that uh, you can make it through this day. There is a way. Life can be better than it is. If you're struggling, life can be better than it is. And uh, every day, there are new mercies, new blessings. Seek them, you'll find them. Like that sunrise, <laughs> that blue sky is a blessing. It uplifts us. You say, I need to rescue myself. You may say, well, rescue yourself in knowing how valuable you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are awesome and you are wonderfully made. And there is one who sustains you and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Creator, the Savior. Even if you don't believe in him, he is working to sustain all of his creation. And that's what God's word tells us. So seek and you'll find a way, a way, a way to keep going on. And look for those around you who need encouragement. Because they're there, I believe. And encourage them. And tell them they are of great worth. And, and when we help other people, we get helped ourselves. I found that in life. That's true. So, the brokenhearted, there's one that's near the brokenhearted, and that's God. That's what I, Psalms, God's word, Psalms 34, verse, verse 18 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. The Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. There is one near you who are brokenhearted, if that's you. And he has the way to save you. He is the way to save you from that brokenheartedness. And Jesus, he came to save, as I shared in the last message. And Jesus said, I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world, as recorded in John chapter 12, verse 44, I begin. And Jesus cried out and said, whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. That is God the Father. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. Now before the feast, verse chapter 13 of John, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put 
it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And it's amazing how the love of God, how he serves, and he works to help the brokenhearted. And he came to save. I was just listening to the, again to the recording uh, of, uh, of Mary Did You Know? recorded by Dolly Parton on her Christmas uh, CD, A Holly Dolly Christmas. And uh, God uses music uh, in his truth to move our hearts. And it's something that the Psalms, God's Psalms, are, are songs. And uh, in, I encourage us all to read every day at least one Psalm. It's God's music to us to encourage us and help us. And that song, uh, Mary Did You Know, listening to it was moving my heart as uh, Dolly Parton was singing with the, the, the choir, people singing with her. And it's one part where it says, Mary, did you know when you kissed the face of your baby, did you know you were kissing the face of God? You kissed the face of God. And... Uh, it made me think of uh, my loved ones. We can, we can think of our loved ones in heaven. Uh, their soul kissing the face of God. And that someday, uh, when we go to heaven, that we can do the same. Kiss the face of our Lord Jesus Christ, the face of God. And uh, Jesus uh, is uh, God who came, Emmanuel. As it's said in, uh, right here, as I've read before, Scripture on Matthew chapter 1. Talking about uh, Jesus to uh, the adopted father of Jesus, Joseph, who knew that his, his, his wife, who he had not yet uh, had relationships with, with physical relationship with, uh, did not conceive a baby by him. So he thought if some other man did that. So he was going to uh, put her aside, as scripture says here. And her husband, Matthew chapter 1, verse 19. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The word Jesus means the Lord saves. Well, Yahweh saves. His very name declares Jesus as God. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet hundreds of years earlier. The prophet Isaiah wrote this, inspired by God, moved by God. He wrote this, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and, be, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. The Jesus is Emmanuel. And uh, Matthew, moved by the Holy Spirit, gave the meaning of that word Emmanuel. And he said, which means God with us. So, <laughs> I can imagine... Uh, Mary kissing her baby, Jesus, kiss the face of God. And thinking of, uh, of, of, of parents who have, have had their children pass away. And uh, if their baby passed away, I believe scripture teaches us that that baby goes to heaven, to home with God. You know, they'll see that loved one that baby in heaven, when they go to see their Lord and Savior Jesus in heaven. 
But we have, as adults, we who, who know uh, are able to choose right from wrong, we need a Savior, and that's Jesus. He came to save us, as I uh, read before. And he does by his dying for us on this cross. That's why, G why the angel said to, uh, to, Dave, to Joseph, he said, you shall call his, him name, his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins by his death on the cross and his resurrection for the forgiveness of our sins. And I'll, we'll, Lord willing, pray that that prayer of what Jesus did on that cross at the end of me speaking now. And uh, it's also that recording, uh, Mary, did you know, says, Jesus says, did you know? Uh, well, it, the song, the words say, did you know, Mary, that, that your baby is the great I am? And Jesus proclaimed himself as God. And uh, as the Son of God also. He proclaimed his Father God, his Father God, in himself as God. And, uh, and the scriptures teach us God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three persons. They are one. And yet they are three persons. That's what the scriptures show us. And uh, Jesus, a wonderful count. He says uh, in, in John chapter 9, recorded in the Gospel of John, uh, Jesus' disciple, John, wrote this. The Holy Spirit brought this to his remembrance of what uh, Jesus did in, as he was on this earth as a man. And uh, I'm reading from uh, John chapter, chapter 8, verse 48, I begin. The Jews... Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? They believed Jesus was demon-possessed. Jesus answered, <laughs> that's sun rising. Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I, but I am, uh, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it. Verse 50. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, God the Father, he's proclaiming as the judge. I believe here. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Keeping his word is Jesus proclaiming himself as the Son of God, who died for our sins and rose from the dead. Uh, Jesus proclaimed this. When we believe this, we will never die. These, so, truly, truly, I say to you, if any, the body will die. Okay, we understand that. But we're more than a body. We're a soul also. All right? This body we have is only a tenth for the soul. And that's who we really are. Okay? Jesus is showing here that we're more than a body. We're a soul that will never die when we have faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We believe who he said he was. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word... He will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. This is my, this, it is my Father who glorifies me. The Father had proclaimed out loud 
especially when, one time when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended and remained upon him. The Holy Spirit came from heaven, remained upon him. And John the Baptist saw this and a voice came from heaven and God the Father proclaimed, This is my Son, whom I love, I am pleased with. The Father proclaimed Jesus as his Son. Right from heaven. And others heard that. John the Baptist heard that. And proclaimed that. That he heard that. Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is, it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. These people who didn't believe in Jesus, they didn't really know God. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoice that he would see my day he saw it and was glad so the jews said to him you are not yet 50 years old <laughs> and jesus is about 33 years old here and i said to him you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen abraham jesus said to them truly truly i say to you as that sun comes brighter and brighter, it reminds us that Jesus is the creator of that sun. He is the one who was before Abraham. He is the creator of all. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one creator of all. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Present tense, I am. Not that I was, I am. Truly, truly, I say to you, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. And uh, I like the, uh, the English Standard Version Study Bible notes here, so I'm going to read them. Uh, describing what Jesus was saying when he said, I am. Okay, He was proclaiming himself as God. The same God that spoke to Moses more than 2,000 years earlier. This, the, he was eternal. He stepped into this time born as a baby, Emmanuel. He came from the Father. All right, so here's the study notes. Uh, if there had been any uncertainty about Jesus' identity in other passages where he said, I am, there was no confusion here because Jesus is claiming to be the one who was alive before Abraham was. That is, more than 2,000 years earlier. Jesus does not simply say, before Abraham was, I was. He doesn't say that. <laughs> Which would simply mean that he is more than 2,000 years old. Rather, he, Jesus, uses the present tense, I am. In speaking of existence more than 2,000 years earlier. Thus claiming a kind of transcendence over time that could only be true of God. The word I am in Greek uses the same expression ego am I found in the Septuagint. The Septuagint being the Greek translation of the Old Testament. In the first half of God's, let me read that again. The words I am in Greek use the same expression ego I am I mean, if I'm saying that right, found in the Septuagint in the first half of God's self-identification in Exodus 3.14, I am who I am. Jesus is thus claiming not only to be eternal, but also to be the God who appeared to Moses at the burning bush, which is recorded in Exodus 3.14, okay? His Jewish opponents understood 
his meaning immediately and they picked up stones to stone him to death for blasphemy, for proclaiming to be God. Let's pray. Lord, I, Jesus, I just thank you <laughs> that you, I believe, want to speak to, uh, through me of your scriptures. Because, boy, Lord, you know I struggle sometimes a lot. And, Lord, we do struggle in life, but yet you're with us, Lord God, to help us. And, God, may we just be rest in your great love for us and look at the cross of Jesus Christ. Were you, Jesus, claiming, saying, I am, to them, proclaiming yourself as God, eternal God, who you are, who came from heaven, and you were born as a baby, and you died on a cross as a man, as God, bearing our sin to save us from our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for taking the penalty for our sins, you being God, to leave the glory of heaven to take the penalty of our sin, the wrath of God, upon yourself for our sin and dying in our place, that we would never die, but live with you forever, be forgiven of our sins, and have life now and forever with you. May we rejoice in your presence with us always. Not be muttering and plaining and think that we're alone, God. To rejoice in your great love and see the cross. You just you demonstrated your love that you died for us and you rose from the dead and you live today that we may rejoice in you and rejoice in you and not worry. We'll trust you and pray with, with you to walk through everything with you in life. Bring it to you and rejoice in you always and trust that you're working in our life, no matter how it may seem that things aren't going right sometimes, that you are working in our life for our good and our benefit. And you're with us with all your love and care. And we have eternal life with you. And our loved ones with you have eternal life with you. And they have already, their soul has kissed the face of God. And someday, Jesus, when you come back, you'll give us all a new body. And we may kiss the face of you, our Lord and Savior Jesus, and thank you for your great love for us. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with me. God loves you. Jesus loves you.